Live like a rat, die like a rat. <laughs> a helix of rats swarms over her. And as they crash down, she is gone. We're looking for a 16 or higher. No fucking 20. 20! Hey, everybody. Let's take a little trip to Dreamland. Slumber, slumber, Z, Z, Z. The train rockets. I make eye contact with Pete, and in my mind say, I owe you an explanation and an apology. Come, let us walk here in the sixth borough. Welcome, one and all, back to another episode of The Unsleeping City. Ooh, our special <laughs> hero Lexi <laughs> today. Wow. Look at this. Uh, say hi, intrepid heroes. Hi, hi intrepid heroes. heroes. Last we left our intrepid heroes off, Sweet. they uh, had miraculously fought the ghosts of New York's crooked cops. Commanded by the onyx badge of Epona Cirillo, sent hastily by rats and summoned the train to dream, making the L train run on time for once. As the train to Nod pulled into the station, uh, the heartbreak of Pete's knowledge that words had been said about possibly having to deal with Pete through means of violence had left the party shaken, trust damaged, however, Arriving at Nod, apologies and amendments were offered not only by Kingston Brown, but also by Nod, the monarch of dreams, who also said an apology and an explanation was owed. The shimmering star-filled skies of the sixth borough, snow rising from the streets into the celestial heights, Ooh. all of you exit the L train purple, sparkling with gold. The unicorn skitters off into Nod. See y'all later. Make sure to hit me up if you got some time to party. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> uh, exiting the train is the six of you, Nod, who begins to float towards a diner. And oh yeah, in like a creepy way, creepy right? Creepy way to sort of still, jet black eyes, unfocused, staring ahead. This is fine. Um, Alejandro walks off the train as well, takes his hat off and goes, I can't believe it. Not end of dreams. This presents a ripe opportunity for some study. <laughs> I can't believe I am seeing it here in the flesh and not through a crystal ball. This is really cool. Uh, you have a crystal ball? I have like a hundred crystal balls. You, you, you have Can to you show me my way around one one time? I just, I got an ex-husband. I'm curious. <laughs> oh, I, I know it's not healthy. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Darling, I, be... I gotta tell you, look, yeah? between you and me, I've been married many, many times. The first time is rough, but you get used to it. We're in, a, this place is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You're right. Um, you guys see that the little like driver's door of the L train opens up, little, like the, the driver door opens up, uh, and Wally walks out uh, and he goes, oh, dang, this is not Canarsie. Uh, 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 that's, this is my son, Wally. Oh I, my I, God, go say hi. Uh, do you want I'm me? I'm a rat. Okay, oh. I'll go over. Excuse me, sir. Oh, dang, hi, okay. excuse me, sir. Hey, Hi. I'm a firefighter. I'm here if you have any questions. Yeah, uh, oh, thanks, sir. Thank you. I, I got turned around. They promoted so, me to conductor, but I think I took the train in the wrong dang place. You are. Uh, Wally, I'm your dad. What? I'm a. Do you, can you see me? Red Jesus. Um, it's. You are my dad? I'm your dad. I'm your dad. Um, listen, I'm so. That explains so much, but. My real dad is the man who raised me, and his name was Bruce Cugrich, and I understand that you might be my biological father, but somewhere out there is Bruce, and he's the man who raised me. God, am I part rat? Can I fit through stuff that's... You're, Wally, the way you respond, you're not believing the wrong... Like, we're in a magic world. Do you, can you see? What do you see here, Wally? 
Does it look like Elisa Frank Trapper Keeper? It does look like Elisa Frank Trapper Keeper. I think he's seeing all right. Uh, uh, Wally, I am I am Bruce Cugrash. I was, I was, Cugrash rather. I, I was turned into a, a rat. Huh? Oh, 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 oh. He just starts crying and sits down. He says. So wait, all oh, those messages from Red Jesus, who was my dad the whole time? Yeah, yeah exactly. We, I, Wally, I've been, uh, I didn't know how to tell you because I thought that it would, uh, I guess I didn't give you enough credit. I thought this would, uh, like, uh, screw you up more knowing that your dad was a rat, but I, I think maybe I just prolonged it and, uh. Wait a minute. So, David said that you did a bad thing, that you were bad and that you had to flee the country and you were like on a tropical island with a bunch of stolen money? That part is not, see, David's a ball buster. He's mostly right, I am a piece of shit, uh, but I, uh, I, never, I never got away. I was uh, polymorphed, uh, you don't know what that is. I was turned into a rat. Uh, permanently, uh, by a curse, uh, by somebody who I, I, I screwed over. So I, your, your, your brother's right about uh, most of this stuff about me being, you know, a bad guy. It takes his hard hat off. Woo! That's a lot to take in. Yeah, that's a. But you, you know, Wally, I was gonna. Uh, there's this whole other magic part of New York, and uh, you know, I've been. Uh, afraid to kind of show myself to you for my own selfish reasons, but I, I, I think this is really good. I think you know. I, I know you've been lonely, kid, and I, I think, uh, I think maybe we can, you know, make you some friends. Pigeons talk and stuff. What? Yeah. Yeah. There's, oh. a, there's a pigeon that's got a hard crush yeah. on your father. Oh, what's his name? Uh, Perry. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> yeah. uh, should we hug? <laughs> Is that cool? Are you mad at me? You see, Lucia says, I thought you were mad at me. I just absolutely start bawling. <laughs> I could never, ever be mad at you, Wally. He God picks, damn it. He picks you up and goes, you're way fluffier than most rats. <laughs> <laughs> Sophia takes out a disposable camera and gets some pictures. <laughs> and, uh, Ricky's oh just God. openly weeping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, this is beautiful. Uh, he gives you a big hug and says, I always thought, I always knew there was a big rat in the sewers and the tunnels that was looking out for me. Nobody ever believed me none. And I always thought it was Rat Jesus because it was like, you know, I lost having a dad when I was young and then sort of like, I don't know, the city or someone upstairs was looking out for me. It means a lot more than it was you the whole time, Dad. Wally, we abs I do not deserve you. you <laughs> Absolute beautiful bastard. Uh, no, truth, truth be told, uh, you you helped me uh, when I was first. Uh, your, your brother, your brother was right. I did I did a lot of bad things. I stole a lot of money from people, and um, I was punished for it. I was I was turned into a rat. That's why I don't look like I used to. Um, and I was I was a bitter, angry person, and I was just hiding in the tunnels, wasting away. But I. You know, I I would watch you, and I would see the way that you know you treated people, and uh, you know I you helped me more than I could ever help you, Wally. Well, shucks, that means a whole awful lot. And and now that we know, we can find a way to turn you back from a rat. Uh, yeah, I you know I kind of don't mind it at this point. My life's been a lot better since I've been a rat. Yeah, you should see him with a perm. He's actually very attractive. Okay, then we'll turn me into a rat. Uh, that would be cute as hell. Do you want to be a rat, <laughs> Wally? All right. Hey, hey, I don't know. This is the gang, by the way, Wally. This Hi. is uh, my name's Wally Cogrich. I work for the MTA. Uh, this was supposed to go to Canarsie. We're gonna get this as a maintenance issue, so we're gonna get this fixed Wally, as soon as possible. You don't have to. You don't have to do that. Okay. Just enjoy it. Why don't we go get some food? Yeah, yeah. that sounds like a good go? idea. Um, Nod has already sort of progressed down. Oh, the great baby! <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> you see, Nod turns around and says, Nod, I prefer Nod to gray baby. I am gray, but I'm fully not a baby. 
Mm. Not a what baby. is the great baby? baby. Well, it's too no, far away. Not a baby. Don't call. Uh, Would you say you're not a baby, not yet a woman? <laughs> or a man? Well, that was a Britney Spears reference. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm not, not a girl. I'm showing myself out. Uh, not yet. I'm just like you looking know. eyes at Kingston like, how do we get involved with this all of is, these fucking this idiots? Is easily, this is some I need wild to drink shit. We're in God. <laughs> Well, and all of these oh, people have focused on, like, like The uh, rap whatever. man just met his son. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you see that uh, uh, Wally, without even asking, picks you up and puts you on his shoulder. Oh, yeah. Uh, Hell you yeah. ride around. He goes, my dad's a little rat wizard. Uh, <laughs> wizard? Just absolutely oh, God. Crying. oh, my God. Why? Who does... No, I'm we crying, don't deserve too. You. I'm with you. We don't deserve like... you, Wally. Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh Ox God. is, like, playfully jumping around as you walk. Um... Uh, <laughs> everyone here make uh, make uh, uh, perception checks if you'd be so kind. Everything was so sad. So I would mean? also like to take a look around with my Mara of Mananan, 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 and see invisibility. Did you? Oh, I got it. Is it is is perception? Perception, yes. Nineteen. Uh, Sixteen. Nineteen. Sixteen. Can I also? Do I still have magic? Do I still have my powers? Uh, uh, as you guys walk, so. Anyone that beat a 15 on a perception check, as you're walking, you're kind of silently going, while he's kind of talking excitedly. Also, Alejandro is casting Identify on the different magical item you guys got from the bodega. Um, so there's a kind of stuff going on, and it feels really wild and fun here. Also, there's a lot of noise coming from Nod. I would say that there are, at any given point, between five and 20 shooting stars crossing the sky here, and they do make a kind of... <laughs> noise, and you can hear kind of bubbling and chattering from inside various buildings, although the streets are kind of open and not very populated here. Those that beat a 15 notice, uh, as Kingston walks through this realm, everything here is mist on the ground that goes up to about your ankles. Where Kingston walks, the mist recedes from Kingston a little bit, and Kingston is walking on sidewalk uh, that appears underneath him. Cool. Um, uh, and this, and therefore the snow doesn't kind of hit him because the snow is issuing from the mist. Um, you had a 19, right, Pete? Mm -hmm. You look at this and it is somewhat melancholy as you look at it. The dream world is receding from Kingston out of respect for his station and the power that he represents, in the same way that you're able to tap into wild abilities when you're in the waking world. But as a result of that, this sense of whimsy and wonder and joy that everybody else seems to be able to partake in while they're here, seems to, out of respect and deference, but abandon Kingston. Kingston doesn't appear able to see the reflections that you guys are seeing, the funhouse mirror of the glassy buildings that you pass by, where you guys see all these strange potentials and images and fun illusions. Kingston's reflection remains his own here and doesn't change into something else. And there is a stoic silence that reflects a deep sadness as Kingston walks through this place. Whoa. I'm glad I rolled low on that perception yeah, check. So I'm sad. not trying to get yeah. this kind of burdens. Uh, yeah. 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 I think it was made even sadder by the fact that nobody else notices and everyone's just like, wow! wow. Um, you see hey, the great baby, can I fly? <laughs> <laughs> Do you wish to fly? You begin to <laughs> float up into the air. I grab her ankle. <laughs> you grab I his grab ankle. His ankle. Uh, you see that, uh, yeah. Mister, your umbrella pops open, um, and you. I got you. Uh, I got you. You see that Ox jumps up and grabs onto your purse, <laughs> Sophia. Uh, <laughs> good dog. Good dog. Uh, and you guys whisk away off into the night sky. You see that the woman in the moon turns around and goes, "Oh." Lovely. It's been so it's long. It's been so long. You look great. You look great. You look great. Um, you see, uh, she uh, swirls a wind of moon dust around you. <gasps> all of your clothing sparkles. And you see that all the denizens of this place start going, Hey, it's Misty Moore! And they start clapping. Um, you it's see. Like kind of shaking, like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as you, no days off. Uh, as you fly away, um, you see that there is this incredible, uh, like, 
marble statue at a flying grand piano that begins to twirl around you in the air and says, ladies and gentlemen, the incomparable, the one and only Misty Moore. Fly me to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, uh, go ahead and give me a performance oh God, advantage. A free, a free Misty Moore show? <laughs> Uh, that is a 26. Um, incredible! Uh, Misty, you, your illusion magic doesn't even cost spell slots here. Uh, you watch the most heart-rending performance of Fly Me to the Moon as this statue plays the piano in accompaniment. You actually fly up to the moon, and as you sort of hit the last final note, uh, the moon actually leans and kisses you on the cheek. Uh, uh, you are effectively blessed uh, while Amazing. you're here. Uh, you see, she says, I've loved you my whole life. Oh no, I've loved you my whole life. Uh, you see, she looks- I make out with the moon. Um, <laughs> you see the moon? You guys see Misty and this giant moon start really kind of going at it. What's um, happening? Oh, you're holding oh, on to her leg. I'm holding on yeah. to her Mouth closed open for dark. Mouth closed oh, yeah. open. Just... For like 1940s Hollywood, uh, there's like a lot of laws about wait. how much you can kiss. So it's like full closed mouth, but like moving back I and forth. I like to think there's one little cruel intention spit that like falls <laughs> on us. Oh, like... oh, so nasty. <laughs> Uh, Misty, you feel incredible here. Uh, you also have a lot more control here over how you appear, uh, uh, your, your illusion magic. You think you can kind of cast it here kind of without too much trouble at okay, all. Uh, so it feels very elementally similar to fairy here, which you haven't been back to great. in centuries. Uh, the only difference between this place and fairy that you can kind of feel intrinsically is weirdly, fairy is a little bit more conservative than this place is. Mm -hmm. Fairy has like kings and queens and hierarchy and laws about like eating food in places and doing favors for people. Ugh, why did? I, why else would I leave? No kings, no masters. That's what you get in New York City. <laughs> exactly. So you're having a ball here. Um, you eventually descend back down. Um, you guys follow Nod. Uh, into towards the banks of the East River, and you see that Nod just starts walking into the East River, uh, just submerging in the water, and starts to kind of glide effortlessly underneath the water of the East River. Um, I'm gonna follow. You guys follow. Um, I take out a little nip. Uh, <laughs> Let's do this. You guys go down. The water exists purely kind of on the surface, and it, as you go through, uh, the sound is the quality of being underwater, but you're not wet. It just feels very chilly and brisk down here. Uh, How's Kingston doing? Yeah, is, is it? Is he just sopping wet and unable yeah, to like, breathe? Yeah, like, did I, I, like, I see all of these things. Like, I watch her kiss, like, kiss make out with, with the, the moon. moon. Yes. It's just, for me, like, there's no flying or those sorts of... You are unable to fly here, and as you approach the water, the water parts as you get Got here. Uh, um, can I run up to Kingston and hand him, like, a little... Tupperware salad that I had in my pocket. You hand Kingston a Tupperware salad. Hey man, I got this to go at a restaurant I was at earlier. I don't know if you're hungry. Oh. Other drugs in the salad? No. Did you put drugs in the this salad? Sober, it's actually a sober salad. So. <laughs> this is a salad. I mean, the fact that you have a word for I mean, a sober salad as opposed to, to this one is a sober what's, salad. What's not a sober salad? You just salad. put ketamine over the tomatoes. <laughs> Mm. It's fun. That sounds good Absolutely for a wild. Uh, But this thank, one isn't like uh, that. Thank you, Pete. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, maybe I'll eat it later or yeah. something. Um, cool. You hold this sweet thing. As you hold the salad from Pete, you feel, a, Kingston, a little bit of the joy of the dream realm seep in <laughs> through your fingers, through this little Tupperware of salad. Um, and you see that a bunch of the little cherry tomatoes in the salad turn around and eyes pop out and they go, We're good. Fuck this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought you said it was a sober salad. It is a sober salad. Why are the cherry tomatoes talking to me? We're then? in the dream world, man. <laughs> okay. Uh, Wally, look at the tomatoes. I hold it out to you. Oh, look at that. What's you guys' names? And you see they say, we're all named Esteban. Um, <laughs> I, I took some of the cherry tomatoes in here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my we God. All have the same. We're going to make him strong and healthy. Thank you, tomatoes, for your nourishment. <laughs> Are you religious? I feel like you and Wally should hang out, Ricky. You see, Wally says, hey, oh, man, look at you. 
He says, I, I think I've seen you before. I got the fireman's calendar because I love heroism. Oh, yeah, I definitely, I'm definitely Mr. March on that. Hi, I'm Wally Cogridge. I work for the MTA. Nice to meet you, Wally. <laughs> we could be really good friends, I feel like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, great. <laughs> okay, you're my best friend. Awesome, you're my best friend. Awesome. Uh, so he puts an arm around your shoulder. Right. And then uh, uh, Cook Rich is on. <laughs> just you're crying at both of you. Oh my God, this is just such beautiful. disgusting, oh, grubby just, tears. Oh. Um, you guys begin to walk along the floor <laughs> of the East River. Um, as we go on the floor of the East River, you see there's a bunch of like uh, sort of toilets filled with treasure down here and <laughs> bathtubs overflowing with silver coins. You see that on little like anchor chains covered in algae and sort of seaweed, there are these giant king beds that are just floating partially in the water. And you see that each bed has like a little mobster in a pinstripe suit with a bunch of fishes. Oh, all sleeping with the fishes. Oh. Are they pixies? Oh, human? No, my human God. monsters. Um, I uh, mean, that's so peaceful. Do these kind of bad guys deserve <laughs> such a nice end? Yeah. Look, as again, look, they may be mobsters, but they're great supporters of the arts. So, <laughs> can I try and wake one up? <laughs> oh. I'm trying to sleep here. You're waking up all my fishes. The fishes start swimming around. <laughs> What'd you do to sleep with the fishes? Hmm? What'd you do to sleep with the fishes? I crossed the Don. I ratted him out to the feds. Oh. Which Don? Hmm? Don Confetti? Oh, no. Uh, Lucky Luciano. Okay. Mm. All right. <laughs> well, good work. I'm wow, hey, Ricky, you're going to get a clue work. soon. I'm serious, I man. I feel like it's coming. I feel like I'm eventually going to figure a thing out. <laughs> yeah. You can text Esther about it. Uh, Is that, do I have service? <laughs> um, uh, only people that have Sprint have service here. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Uh, you guys uh, continue on. Um, you see this enormous diner at the bottom of the East River uh, called Poseidon's Diner. And you see there's a huge statue of Poseidon holding a trident up on the top of it. But inside it's like chrome milkshake mas machine, four mica countertop. Uh, you see that there's a bunch of merfolk waitresses, but they oh are like, you see that there's a very like, Big, broad uh, mermaid woman, older, like in her 50s. She's looking at a cigarette and those like horn rim glasses with a chain around them. Uh, seashell bra, but then like a little waitress apron around her fishtail, swimming around. And there's a little name tag on the seashell bra that says uh, Helen on it. Hey, um, will you, you guys try to sit down and eat? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah I, I, I do have a little quick question about, I don't want to be rude, but. As a fairy, you know where I'm coming from. If we eat here, we can still leave, right? Oh, yeah, there's no rules about okay. that here. No, I'm worried about that. I just That's need you to know. You, she's looking I mean, out for us. Look, there are a lot of strange rules in these other dimensions, and it's Do you better have to, when you go to another place, it's good to know oh, about the culture. Yeah, Do you have a low cow menu? Oh, for sure, sweetheart. Okay. Yeah, we got the whole, and you hands a little thing. It's at the very bottom after beverages on the last page. Oh, this is great. It's not just cottage cheese, everything. That's no, every other time. No, I understand. Um, you see that the menu is like the thickest menu in the world. It's like gleaming diner mints in a silver bowl up at the, at the front counter. Uh, and a bunch of these mermaids sort of swim around. It seems to be like a lot of different like Greek myths here. You see some like, you know, Dryads over in a corner. There appears to be some like tritons and various. There's like a parking lot outside that has a bunch of hippocampi, like giant seahorses and stuff Can I like that. Can look at the mints? But yeah, you take a look at the mints. Yeah, you see there's like, some lovely little mints there. Okay, I'll question them about Don one. Confetti. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, cool, you take a mint. You see that the mint looks up at you and goes, Know this. I am intended to be eaten after the meal to freshen your breath. Should you hold on to me for too long, I will get chalky and crumbly in your pocket, and you may wash your clothes with me, and there will be a sticky patch on them for aeons to come. It's a risk I'm willing to take. <laughs> <laughs> ask him if ask ask the men if it's true that there's little there's uh, lots of pee on them. Is it? I saw 2020, and they said that there's lots of pee on mints. Just a quick question. <laughs> What's your name? My name is Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Manticaster. Ronaldo Manticaster. Do you, are you covered in pee by any chance? <laughs> Only my own. 
Thank you. <laughs> uh, Congratulations, okay. man. Wow. You guys sit at this giant corner booth. Uh, Alejandro uh, finishes identifying the objects, and he says, these are truly some remarkable treasures from um, the bodega of La Gran Gata that you have discovered. Uh, you see, he says, this here is the grill of persuasion. By putting it in your mouth, you have honeyed words that can affect the hearts of those that you speak to. Sick. Um, this uh, is the Holy Grail detergent. Uh, it can restore not only the clothes, but the very soul of the wearer. This is a really jacked up thousand hour energy. It can, I mean, this will put some pep in your step for a long time. And this is the bagel of all things. You see, he says, the bagel's toppings contain everything in creation, in microcosm. Simply shake some of the toppings onto a paper plate and you can read the fortune of the world in the toppings themselves. Sick. Hell yeah. Cool. Oh my God. I'm glad well. you didn't eat it. Yeah, I definitely almost ate <laughs> it. I'm so sorry, I really encourage you to eat it. <laughs> I mean, oh. your shits would have told some real stories there. <laughs> Just, if you consume the bagel of all things, you will disperse your essence throughout the universe. <gasps> what a way to go. Is uh, that it's, good? It's supposed to be, it will destroy your ego and your identity, but bring your consciousness into alignment with all of the cosmos. Also, it's very good toasted. I hear you should get it toasted. Uh, maybe I'll get it toasted, and then maybe if I'm like about to die, I'll pop it. I can unhinge my jaw. Did you see how many mints I just ate? Should I just drink this oh. now? Yeah. His, don't don't his do it right now. thousand before. hour energy. That's for, for 42, 42 days. days. Jeez Louise. Wait, so you just don't sleep? <laughs> Once consumed, the imbiber is immune to sleep effects and exhaustion. Could I just not sleep for 42 days? <laughs> Oh my God, I'm Dude. not telling you what to do Dude, to eat my first. Don't, don't drink that on an empty stomach. Let's yeah. grab some food. Do you yeah. have huevos rancheros here? Can I oh, talk to you? Oh yeah, for sure, we got, yeah, we got a huevos Oh, rancheros. I would actually love some cottage cheese with some fruit on top. Cottage cheese. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Egg cream? Yeah, we got your egg cream for sure. Right. Uh, can the I get fuck the fuck is an egg cream? You never had oh egg. my you never god, an egg cream is a classic. Right, can we get two egg cream? Uh, what? Get two Actually, I'll get one too. I love an egg cream. I'll do an egg cream. Right. Right. I'm a egg. chocolate egg cream. Can you get an egg, egg cream, please? <laughs> By the order of not, egg creams for the entire table. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and you see that uh, Helen brings out your various orders. They come out right away. It's diner food. It's the best. The lighting in here is perfect. You guys can talk as loud as you want, and you just have this feeling of wholeness and oneness I'm here. I'm slicing in the diner. into my egg cream. <laughs> hey, you need to get your egg oh and that fork it's... and knife out of the glass. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a drink. Drink. You get an egg cream, which is an old Depression era New York delicacy. It's <laughs> seltzer, chocolate syrup. It's sort of a and eggs. It's no like eggs a, in it. It's, milk it's milk basically too. a... It's sparkling milk. Sparkling it's chocolate milk. Sparkling chocolate milk. It's a low-rent milkshake from the era of the Great Depression. Uh, and I used to no. make milk. <laughs> but fine. thank you, They're but thank you, everybody. but thank you. Egg greens are for everybody. There's a Turkish uh, carbonated yogurt drink that I tried a little while ago, and oh. I felt the same way about that. Oh, I might mm. like that. Yeah, um, maybe... Sounds fermented um, things. You see, very good uh, for Nod you. Uh, is sitting next to Pete, and Nod is just leaning their head against Pete's arm, and kind of Nod looks very much like a little kid whose like beloved older brother has just come back from college, and is just holistically and warmly like just obsessed with Pete, leaning their head against Pete's arm. Um, and you see that Nod looks up and. Um, can sort of hear your bottles like of stuff rattling around in your coat and just opens up their hand and makes a bunch of insane uh, purple gold flecked pills show up in their hand. What? What is that? If you want it, I don't know. It just seems like you like that kind of stuff, so I thought I'd make some for oh, you. Oh, that's, uh, well, that's a perfect segue. Um, you guys, I, uh, I'm gonna try to Rain in, rain in the drugs. Uh, oh, you know, it's, great. I, I get it. You know, there's a lot of things I'm learning right now, so there, it's gonna be hard enough sober. So you know why, what? you know, why add mushrooms? You I'm, want a drug? 
go for a run. Anyway, none. Thanks again. Um, <laughs> I'm going to just pretend that I didn't scroll past that in my feed. Um, <laughs> that's really nice of you. I'll just keep these, you know. But uh, uh, thanks. Nod smiles. As I've stated before, welcome, all of you, to the dream realm. Nod, I'm so happy that you're here. Pete, you saved my life. Thank you so much. Yeah. As I was saying before, I owe you an apology and an explanation. Dark forces are moving against the will of New York City, both the waking world and the dreaming. Every so often, in a time of great peril and change, it has fallen to me, the gray orphan of New York, to select a champion to fight for and advocate and wield the power of the dream realm. Because of the dismissal that most humans give to their dreams, forgetting them upon waking, and the cynicism and realism that pervades most people's waking minds, the dreaming cannot send a message to this champion beforehand because these messages would be dismissed and batted away. Even you, Pete, for so long believed that your role as the Vox Phantasma was simply an illusion or hallucination. Yeah, I thought I was going crazy. And I'm so sorry for that. No, that's fine. I I mean, you just entered this too, right? This is yeah, nuts. Yeah, I, I mean, I thought I was drunk for a while, which I was. I shouldn't I shouldn't say I wasn't I drunk. I thought I was I, high for a while, yeah, which I which was. Which you also were, uh, yeah. But... It, it gets all good. Yeah, Twisted maybe you should start a sobriety club. I'm going to do a dry January, but I'd like to enjoy the holidays. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nod looks over and says, so unfairly and unfortunately, the only way for me to make contact with the Vox Phantasma is to choose one, which means that you didn't get a say in receiving these powers. And for that, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, it's, it's been cool so far. I'm glad. I think I chose right. You saved my life, and I think... For whatever it's worth, Pete, you're a pretty good hero. Oh, God, that just means a lot to me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Um, you see that Nod looks out and says, there's some other business to discuss, though, which is that Robert is moving against New York City. Yeah. What is Robert's deal? Why does he want to control the flow of magic? He also, Why is he, he, it seems like he's trying to like create spaces that cannot be accessed by magic and scried upon and are confusing magic in other boroughs. Robert Moses constructed what the Gramercy Occult Society understands as the highway hex. You see Alejandro's eyes go wide as this is said. So he goes, I, so I can't believe that that's true. You see that- um, Does he have anything to do with the fairy? You see that Nod sort of acknowledges that and says, Mr. Moses wanted wealth and power above all else and therefore sold his soul to hell and to fairy. Oh, that I double actually, dealing motherfucker. I actually meant a different fairy, but go on. You see, uh, Nod looks up and they say, if nothing else, Robert Moses is one of the most proficient deal makers and power brokers of all time. By selling his soul to hell and to fairy, he was able to capitalize on both sources of power through magic for most of his living career. And when the time came for him to die, neither party could collect without risking angering the other faction. So it was just double dealing. He just, he pretended like, how, how do you sell your soul twice? Isn't there some sort of proof that you would still have it? And I mean, look, I, I gotta say, Fairy is not great at paperwork. <laughs> okay. You see, uh, you see, Nod points to Misty and says, 
He made the deal with Ferry first, knowing that their bureaucratic record keeping wouldn't reach hell in Which time. Which is like, it's no fun. We're like a real fun focused people. Yeah. We all love paperwork. Dude. It's like, oh, we trust you. Bad see. idea, always bad. Uh, you see that Nod says, uh, Robert, I do not know Robert Moses' plans. I do not know what he's doing or why he's moving against us, but I do know that his mind is fixed on that thing which Pete summoned forth at the beginning of his powers, which is what I was referencing when I mentioned the words of Lazarus. Misty, would you be kind enough to uh, share with us uh, the new Colossus? Emma Lazarus was a very powerful caster. Mm. Yeah, um, this is definitely a thing that I know off by heart. <laughs> <laughs> Just let, um, give me a second to remember what it is. Uh, uh, why did I have to look in a mirror to get you? Why did Robert Moses have me look into a mirror? Um, you see that Nod looks at you and says, uh, the dream world is a reflection of the waking world. And there's a powerful connection between dreaming and mirrors and reflections of all kinds. If you remember falling through that puddle the first time you came here, they're an easy way to access these other realms. Whoa. Dreaming and the waking world have some, they can exist in harmony, but more often than not, they exist in conflict. And a lot of that has to do with the values that are espoused by each. Mm. You see, Nod looks at you and says, the nature of this realm is a chimeric one. And by that, I mean it is the ephemeral axiom. In dream, and you see that Nod summons a little twirling thing of smoke and light and says, take, for example, a child's wish. And you see this child's wish kind of manifests in the smoke. And you see it is a trip to Disneyland and a new bicycle and having a superpower to stop a bully at school and this other thing, shifting and shifting and shifting and shifting and shifting and shifting and shifting. And then Nod looks at you and says, but well, you already know, Pete, that when you cast your magic in the waking world, a thing that can be multiple things when it comes into contact with the waking world, you see there's just a bike, stationary, has to be just one thing. Mm -hmm. That's the power of the waking world. When you take a dream from the dreaming and you bring it to life, all the things it could have been die, and only the thing that it is survives. As soon as uh, Nod says that, Sophia, you in your head here, it is what it is. Um, you see that Nod looks sort of blankly ahead. Wally kind of goes, wow, that, I get that. Um, <laughs> and, uh, um, I, I do have a little bit of signal down here, even though I don't have sprint. So I, I, can, I, I can borrow mine no, if no, you want. No, no, okay, it's I, I oh, What is that, a, a Galaxy Note 5? That's huge. That yeah, is it's a massive huge phone. phone. Yeah, I like it. I can see a little better. I can read it like a magazine. No, oh, right. <laughs> Ahem, not like the brazen giant of Greek fame with conquering limbs astride from land to land. Here at our sea-washed sunset gates shall stand a mighty woman with a torch whose flame is the imprisoned lightning and her name mother of exiles. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome. Her mild eyes command the air-bridged harbor that twin cities frame. Keep ancient lands your storied pomp, cries she, with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these the homeless tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. At the words golden door, Pete, you feel above the sky here in Dreaming in New York City. The golden rectangle that first appeared to you when the voice started speaking. Start spreading the news. Nod looks up. The 
golden door. What did I do? What that? was that? There was a there was a golden rectangle, and I think Lazarus was talking about. Lazarus was a powerful fox phantasma. In her time, in the mid 1800s, she was the voice of dream, and the dream behind the golden door was what those tempest-tossed were seeking. You see that citizenship. You see that they kind of actually nod and say, behind the mother of exiles lifts her lamp beside the golden door. Prosperity, opportunity. And you see that the black eyes shimmer, the American dream. It's a very powerful dream indeed. You see that Nod looks and says, when you call a little wish or a figment into the waking world, it can become a spell, a moment, a flash, a joke, a little bit of joy. There are dreams that are so large and important that they represent a threat to the cosmos if they are brought into the waking world. They're called paragons, dreams of such magnitude and importance that causing them to manifest in waking life would break or rupture them. Just in the way that that wish becoming a bicycle destroys all the other versions bringing something from dream to waking, if that thing is a paragon, destroys so much. Mm. There have only been three paragons before this one. The golden door is what we call a paragon doorway. It is something that is created when a dream is so powerful that its meaning keeps moving back and forth from dream to waking. The golden door exists because of all the people that came here looking for it, and all of their belief in it and questing after it means that it starts to become realer and realer. These doorways happen and they represent a success of a dream becoming so important, but also a great danger in its ability to be pulled into the waking world. What are the other two? Was one of them the Grand Canyon? <laughs> <laughs> you see the uh, Nod shakes their head, looks up and says there were three before, and they were all a long time before. Not even anywhere near this part of Nod. The three Paragon doorways that existed bef before were the Pearly Gates, the Mouth of Hell, and the Road to Fairy. Mm -hmm. So let me get this straight. What I hear from you is that the American dream is one of these paragons, and you think that in some way Robert Moses is trying to bring the American dream into the waking world? And so that there's a static so I, meaning for the American dream so that's so not to destroy ephemeral? it. I think what, he wants to create a fourth space, right? There's like a, a force. Oh, like, like heaven, I knew hell, this. Fairy, American dream. Can I do like a history check on Waking this? Yeah, make a history check. Dream. Right? How is my history? Oh, it's a, mm. how about a nine? Uh, you've got no. Th so the, the guesses so far were like creating a fourth space, and then also this idea of like bringing it out would create that fourth, uh, or, or would yeah. Dragging it into the waking world would give it a static meaning. Um, you see that uh, Nod looks at you and says, taking the Paragon doorway that has existed in New York City for centuries and bringing it into the waking world. What caused it? Dreams shouldn't have just one meaning. 
not dreams that big and not dreams that important. I agree. So then who was saying spread the news I'm leaving today? Nod shrinks a little bit at that and says, whatever was on the other side of the door. Oh God, it's not the Protestant work ethic, is it? Because that is exhausting and I've had enough of it. <laughs> so this guy, this guy Robert Moses, also does a lot of uh, business in the in the waking world because I knew him uh, in the eighties. Yeah. Uh, so, so what? this could be business driven. So yeah. what does all of this have to? Why would he want to hurt you? Why did he want to kill you? Because I've barred his entrance into Nod. I think he saw it as an opportunity to capture me and finally get access to the door. I haven't allowed him entrance here. He's, uh, deals with like real estate, right? Is it like a certain amount, like, he, does he want to be like the first person to get all this land? <laughs> you see, Nod kind of shrugs, says, I don't know what Robert does or doesn't understand about this place. Robert is or was undead, undreaming can't come here other than physically. You know, I am old enough to remember when motherfuckers like that used to live in goddamn Westchester. <laughs> <laughs> Does he want it? Why they think they can come into my New York City. Hey, Wally. Yeah? What were you, where were you on the train? I was in a conductor's uh, little room, the little conductor's uh, place where he dried a train. And there wasn't, you were by yourself? I think it was Alejandro's music. Um, uh. was, yeah, I was there by myself. I cast one. Dispel Magic on Wally. <gasps> you see, Wally goes, oh, wow! Just making sure, bud. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, Nod, I got one more bone to pick with you. With regard to the, to the you know, the dream folk who we had to deal with in Brooklyn. I mean, what was that about? The Bugsters. You see, uh, Nod says, Nod looks a little bit troubled at that, and kind of almost like glares at you a little bit, Kingston. Nod says, they escaped because Pete gave them permission to leave. Pete wields the power of this realm. Some, something was able to tip them off. And what was that, Gray Baby? I don't know. I don't know. It, in order to create a Vox Phantasma, I have to give a piece of myself. And it means that I'm not as powerful here as I would otherwise be. Who did you give a piece of yourself to? I start crying. <laughs> 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 Oh my God. <laughs> or uh, peace. <laughs> so you're telling me that there's something going on here in Dreamland that is a, that is leading to people wanting to come to, to the, to the fold of Dreamland to come to New York, and you don't know about it? The Vermians that went to Astoria, they they're around here. They're they're kind of a pest or a parasite. Mostly, the rest of the Dream World can keep them at bay, but. Something managed to make its way here and tip them off. Not Robert, who can't come here. What do you mean by tip them off, though? Let them know where Pete was going to be and uh. trick him or, or take advantage of Pete not understanding his powers to get into New York. I think what Kingston is saying, though, it's like, where, how, what is creating the desire to leave the dream world for the waking world? Or is that, so just, yeah, is that just... It's great here. Why would you ever want yeah, to leave? Why see, would anyone want to leave? You see, the nod says... Every night, millions of people come here. So why wouldn't the people here want to go to the waking world Ooh, sometimes? Right. Hey, okay. look, if you That's want fair. tickets to the premiere of Midsummer Nights, here, here, let me just... Wow! They have popcorn? Uh, they don't have popcorn, but you can get a little bag of mixed nuts. Okay. And a, a tiny little sippy cup of wine. Like you're a tiny child, but you're drinking wine. It's great. I love it. Oh, uh, I love those. You just rip the top off. Nod goes, no, I like the sippy sip cup part. The sippy cup. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, you see that Nod says, um, but um, what's important to remember also 
is that within the aspect of all of the things happening here in Nod, Pete saved me, and Robert is not allowed to come here. There, there is a degree to which the golden door has already started to slip into New York since Emma Lazarus wrote that poem. It's mm -hmm. been partially there in the waking world, but mostly it's still here in Nod. And I have taken precautions. Robert Moses can't come here. Also, the door is locked and can't be opened. Key to the city. The key to the city, someone has the key it. To someone the stole city. it from the If he the had bodega. the key to the city, could he open the door, Gray Baby? I would thank you not to call me that again. He means it in a respectful way, like, hey, baby, that happens to be great. Like a, like a uh, tone of affection, that, you not see that, that you nod, are a child. Uh, uh, nod sort of acknowledges that and goes, Uh, and you feel something change in the dreaming. Uh, Nod goes, okay, I'm glad to know. There is no longer a lock on the golden door. Like a punch code? We can, you can trust us. Okay. See, okay. Nod shakes their head and says, so the door is both locked right now, but also does not have a lock any longer. Okay. Um, Does that mean that the American dream is unavailable for the people coming to New York now? I do have it's done. You see that uh, the you know Nod looks at you and says, maybe you can all go back to the waking world, and then I can open the door again, or at least let it be unlocked so that those coming here can go through. But for maybe a day or two, you see Nod kind of looks sheepish. Maybe for a day or two, it'd be better just to keep it shut all the way. So as the, as the door slips from dream world into the waking world, does that mean that the many paths to success become less and less and fewer and fewer and fewer? See, Nod sort of agrees. There's like a, there's like a gradient. They say, they say, the Paragon doorway is the vessel through which the Paragon comes. So the golden door becoming more and more real makes the risk higher and higher that something could draw the full Paragon on the other side through into the waking world. And the closer that is to happening, the closer we are to it being one this thing is forever. Yeah. Uh, he can't come here, but can he go to Ferry? Because Ferry, I know, is adjacent. Robert Moses won't leave New York City. The, he owes his soul to both Ferry and Hell, and they sent people to collect on his debt. And by the time they got there, he had finished building the highways and they could no longer scry through or enter. I'm sure you're well aware, Misty, that no one's been able to come seeking justice or things <clears throat> owed to them for a while. Yeah. Yeah, what, no, what's that mean? Why what's, would you know? Uh, well, y I Can may I not have check? left <laughs> Ferry on the best of terms, but look, everybody comes to New York City for a reason. I felt like Ferry wasn't, you know, I, I wasn't growing in Ferry. Uh, there's a very strong hierarchy there, and you're just like, oh, God, I, how many more hundreds of years do I have to pay my dues? Do you so know what I mean? So they're just coming to claim your presence? Well, that and I may have uh, taken a little tiny baby little souvenir with me. <laughs> like, a baby was souvenir? It a baby? Like a rattle? It was or not, like a gray baby? Well, look, uh, you may. N fairies are pretty allergic to iron, and iron is pretty prevalent in the, in the waking world, and especially oh, in New worry. York. Oh, don't worry, all this so. is real gold. Thank you, I appreciate it. But you may Can I do an my... investigate to see if that's actually gold? <laughs> it's all real gold. I get it from, no, I I get it from uh, eBay. Dude, that's real gold. All right, cool. eBay. They have to verify. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. No, it's beautiful. Thank They're you. beautiful rings. Um, uh, yeah, no, my shoes uh, may have uh, technically still belonged to, <clears throat> to Tanya, but 
Uh, she wasn't using them. She never leaves fairy. Like, what a waste of a beautiful thing. Do you know what I mean? Titania from the show? Oh, Titania. Oh, well, I'm Titania from the show, but also Titania from fairy. Wow, so you embodying her on stage is kind of like a fuck you to someone you already stole from? Mm -hmm. No, you I just would say it was a, a tribute or an homage. <laughs> oh, an homage. She's, oh, gonna, homage. she's gonna kill you. Only right. if she can get here and I have her goddamn shoes. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. God damn, wow. Misty. Wow, Misty, I mean, wow. I didn't think I could love you anymore. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, you see that Nod smiles and seems so so happy with all of you being here. Alejandra's just in a daze looking around. Um, uh, the diner food is delicious. I put uh, a little Kahlua in my egg cream. Uh, <laughs> that that really that's egg disgusting. Cream. No, no, that yeah. does sound great. Yeah, I will have thank some you. Kahlua. It's really good. Do we, uh, do we want to use the bagel? <laughs> To, do we have a theory What's about... What's the bagel do? Right, the bagel lets me do uh, divination, kind of like ask okay. a god. Uh, yeah, let's world. figure out what's really going on with the uh, I mean, Spot my Mises. feeling is that there's still... Um, maybe I'm harping on an old thing that no one else is They're still thinking about, but souls. the laundering of the souls and the trying to... I almost wonder what's going on there. Is he trying to, like... I don't know. I guess the question is, is he trying to get into these type places, or is he just trying to like... Keep people out. Keep people out. I think he's trying to make his own He's trying to be place. the king of New York. Yeah. He I think, yeah, oh, he needs to, he yeah. needs, he, yeah. he needs to be somewhere. He can't be like, I don't know, if hell and fairy, he can't leave New York. Yeah, I think he what needs his own. What about the Gates though? That's a different thing. <gasps> is he trying exactly to get to heaven? That's exactly what it is. If he's sold his soul to two people, he's trying to make it harder for other it's people to get into he's New York. he's trying to launder. I don't think there's any other souls involved. I think Robert Moses is trying to make himself Dang, a new I had soul. I this really good theory. So that I guess he I'm doesn't. Just gonna... Can sell it to heaven? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe a third keep... place. But I don't You're know. Right. I mean, you see that uh, Nod speaks up and says, if you wanted to investigate, Remember, those three realms, Hell, Heaven, and Fairy, all used to be dreams before they were so loved that they became real. So... Are there any other... Oh, my Can we go to heaven? I don't feel super great about going... Let's go so, to hell. You see... Oh, yeah, <laughs> you, see that, uh, it's Nod, warm, it's... Uh, you see that Nod smiles and says, Misty, I would never send you into harm's way. But there are some neighborhoods where those doors... <laughs> Bless you. So was that there are some neighborhoods where those character? doors used to be. So there's a big fairy neighborhood up near Carnegie Hall where the road to fairy starts. Oh, great. Do they have manna there? Do they make... I just have not had a you good drink Nod, of manna. You see Nod kind of like goes... You see that Helen... Actually, no. Helen, your mermaid waitress, says, Oh, they do a Manhattan there that'll knock your oh. socks off. Oh, my God. I love a Manhattan. Um. You, this is so great about New York. You take these fusions of ideas and, and foods and thoughts and dreams. Um, and uh, you see that Nod also says, Way far into Brooklyn, also, the... Uh, the the pearly gates are near there as well. You oh. could, go, you could, or, or where the pearly gates used to be before they left. But there are forces around there. It's the border of the dreaming, where it borders on these other realms. If you wanted to go and investigate, so do like, we want to investigate feel... these three spots and then use the bagel with what we found? Yes, I think that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I, I do feel compelled to also um, meet up with my brother, oh. as much as we I don't do, want to see right. anyone from. Can we get him to come over to Brooklyn? We can tuba. Oh, where's Hell? How do we get to Hell's Kitchen? Where's Hell's Kitchen. Uh, <laughs> you see that? Yes. <laughs> Got a clue. You, 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 <laughs> hey, good job, man. You did it. I've grown to really like Ricky. <laughs> I'm like, he's just honestly pure. He's I was waiting for the boy. other shoe to drop. You know, and you sometimes to be a piece you're just shit, like a skeptical but... person, and you're like, there's no way that this guy I, is this I nice. read people. I read people for a living, you know. And you I was see, just waiting for it. Uh, Nod says, "There's a bunch of ground for us to cover while we're here." Yeah. Also, at some point. Pete, I would, and anyone else is welcome to come as well. I know that you've been struggling with your magic. I would love to fix that up for you. We could head over to the Metropolitan Museum of Memories and give you all of the knowledge of Arcana of all the past Vox Phantasmite. Yes. I would really appreciate that. Oh, my God. God. I try to do a good job, okay? I, <laughs> I work hard. Hey, and really, I'm the only thing I'm good at is drugs. Okay? And so hey, sometimes when I'm not that. doing good at something else, I go back to what I'm good at. I dip back in the well. You know, my hand instinctively <laughs> reaches to a Ziploc bag, and I whip it out. <laughs> don't, don't, you? you don't. Hand them over, kid. Hand them over. Hand them over. I'll take them for I'll for safety's reasons. 
Um, incredible. You, and yeah, the other one. He and the other all one. And his the other drugs. one. <laughs> um, and you see that each time you empty a pocket, you see that Nod, uh, each time you empty a pocket, Nod fills one of your pockets that is empty with material components for spell casting. So, like, a little bit of magic gold dust and a deck of tarot cards covered in runes and a bunch of dope magic shit oh, just starts it. going yeah. into your pockets. Eat that the backpack here. Awesome oh. jacket. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, Pete, you look much thinner. <laughs> you look yeah, me. I know. No, you you just went out there. I just had kilos on me at all <laughs> okay. times. Very Whoa. thin. You just dropped you 22 you pounds. Need the easy. Easy. Stop it. Does anybody have a bag of infinite holding? Because actually, this stuff is very heavy, and I'm a small old lady. <laughs> I, I can feel carry it. so much lighter uh, everywhere. Pete, if you can't make money now, um, I'm sure uh, Wally, uh, you know, might have a place for you to crash. He's kind of. I've also yeah. got that guest room <laughs> in Staten Island. Cool, cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, I. Well, I was kind of staying with um, Kingston. It's still open to you. Yes. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, then I'm sorted. Thanks. Uh, uh, Cool, so you see that you guys wrap up. Uh, you see that um, Helen comes over with the check, puts it down. You see that Nod looks up at you and says, I rule this entire room, but I don't have any money. I'm a kid. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, we can I take out bed. a Visa gift card. <laughs> <laughs> you put it down. Um, Dale got this for me for my birthday, and I've been waiting to spend it. Um, Helen runs the thing. You come over. You sign for the check. Your husband got you a Visa <laughs> gift card. Yeah, I told you things weren't going well. That's progress, you know? That's Thank progress. you. I know. I've mm -hmm. had it for a while. Uh, you see, it's good to spend it. The check is settled up, and Nod smiles and says, uh, "While you are here, none may harm you. Feel free to cover as much ground as you like. Uh, I've told you the location of the other Paragon doors. If you wish to go and investigate them." And uh, just to double check again, uh, a fairy just generally distrustful of riddles and, and twisted words. Is there a person or a being called Nun who can harm us? You're so good at this. No, there's nobody's gonna hurt okay. me. Um, what about nobody? Is nobody <laughs> gonna hurt mm -hmm. us? Uh, you see, Nod goes, I don't know. <laughs> God damn it. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Um, I'll be mistrustful if I encounter any. Uh, so I have a question. Gosh, While we're go. here, can we spy on other people's dreams? Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> You can do yeah, that. but you'd have to go like all the way to Staten Island. You see, Nod yeah. says, shouldn't be hard. You can all fly up, up, and away. Oh, can I fly? Kingston, you can't fly. I, I can't you. fly. You can, I can, I fly. can I pick Great. up Kingston? <laughs> you can pick up Kingston. I got his. I don't right like arm. this. I, 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 I don't like this at all. You just have an ankle. Um, you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Nod looks at you and says, uh, Pete, you want to head over to the museum? Yeah, sure. Um, the museum? The Metropolitan Museum of Memories. Memories, cool. Um, rad. Uh, so where are you guys all taking off to? We'll start with whoever wants to go wherever. Some of us should go to the Fae, and some of us should go to yeah. heaven. And hell? Well, I think I, we're good on hell. I can, uh... I feel like I kind of belong in hell. I'm a bad guy. Okay. I could go to hell. Could I go to the Statue of Liberty? Just to check it out? I have a question. So I can't talk to my brother right now because we're in the dream world, right? Yes, that's okay. correct. Where would we go to spy on someone else's dream? I'm not saying I'm going to do it. You see, Nod says, you just have to find him. Oh. But if we, like, couldn't find them in real life, it'd probably be equally hard to find them in dream world. It'd probably world. be easier to find them here. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so if you need some support, I'll go with you. If you want to... No, I'm, I'm thinking of a selfish mission that has nothing to do with the greater good. So, I, um, I have a completely fake set of online accounts to stalk my ex. And uh, it always sounds like a good idea, but boom, five hours is gone. It's 4.30 in the morning. There's a piece of pizza on your chest because it's resting there while you scroll. Yeah. And it's just... You got nothing there. Yeah, you know? you're right. That's a dead end. It's not oh, worth that, it. I'm going to end up with pizza on my dead chest. dead and buried. Eat, focus on the pizza. Focus on the pizza. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pete. Hey, hey, yeah. you're Men are dessert, you know? It's nice to have them, but you don't need it. That's oh fair. Oh, my God, I, I love that. Hmm. I believe men are yeah. dessert. Uh, so where I do you... 
That's I, gross. I, <laughs> what? I'm a firefighter. I could just go to hell. You want to go to hell? Yeah. Right, let's go to hell. Okay. Oh, well, you want to go you to hell? What? I'm going to go to hell. Sure thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, is everybody going out? Uh, look, fairy is going to be much more fun. I'll come to fairy then. Great. So no one's going to heaven? I'll go to heaven then, I guess. Oh, I see that uh, Alejandro says, I will keep you company too. OK, I'm, yeah. Um, so Alejandro and Sophia are going to heaven. Cugrash and Ricky are going to hell. Studios. Kingston and Misty are going to fairy. And, uh, and Pete's going with Nod to uh, the uh, to the museum, uh, Mitchell Museum of Memories. Let's go ahead now cool. and see where we go first. Cool. Um, awesome. Uh, Ricky and Cugrash, you guys head out with Wally and Ox. Um, you make your way all the way to Hell's Are Kitchen. Are familiars? Uh, <laughs> you. Hell's Kitchen is fully burning. Um, you just, it's like raging fire. It's like nightmare has a lot of pull in this realm. I got uh, just a rag out and I put some water on it. And just cover it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're walking along, uh, you hear a whoosh, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, and you see that there's a bunch of demons like crouched like gargoyles around here. And again, you're not in hell, you're in dreaming. So these might be demons or they might be nightmares that are wearing a demonic right. guise. Whatever the case, it looks like it's sort of elementally aligned with that place. And you see that a gate opens up. Ding, 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 ding. You hear a shot go off and you see thousands of little rat men looking much like Cugrash, look same height, same kind of build, all wearing suits, start running after a sack of money strapped to a little zip line like at a dog race. Going, <laughs> <laughs> and all these rats start going, and you see that they're like knifing each other and biting each other. Um, oh, this is the rat race. At all. <laughs> <laughs> this is, that's me. Um, you see that uh, one of the guys looks over and goes, Holy shit, Bruce Cugrich! How you doing, Randy? I'm out of the race. You see, he's holding his guts, spilling out of a slit stomach. Holy shit, man! Slap, slap, bloody handprint on your like little cape. You look good, man. Yeah, How's man. it going? You look great. Life was awesome when we were partying all the time and shit, right? Dude, are you still alive? Yeah. Dude, I lost all my money in 2008 and I blew my fucking brains out in the closet, though. Holy shit, man. <laughs> dude, hey, do you have any money? Uh, no, I live in the trash. Fuck, dude, I hear that. Ah, I'm always in pain, dude. Dude, me too. Life sucks so goddamn we bad. We are fucked, we dude. We are so fucked. We are so fucked. Although my son, why? You got reconnected with my son. Hey, do you have any money, dude? And you see, he takes a little knife out. <laughs> don't know. Don't give him money. Ah, right. dude, I, oh, my feet are always burning. <laughs> I try to smother him. He's just feet. <laughs> Ah, it fucking hard stuff. Try to kill him. Oh, we gotta go, dude. And you see, they start taking off. <laughs> um, oh. Gee. This is fucking you horrifying. Yeah. Uh, you see, um, uh, Ricky, do you do you have your divine sense active? Um, I can. Or no? Uh, yeah. you, actually, both of you guys make uh, make a perception check for me. Cool. I'd also like to. I still want to see if, yeah, because I'm seeing all these rats. I was turned into a rat by Gabriella. I guess I want to see if I sense any kind of like witch magic or anything like mm -hmm. that. Go for it. Okay. Okay. Perception. Okay. I got perception. I got perception. Twenty, not nat. Twenty. I got a seventeen. Cool. You're looking for magic stuff. You're looking for the perception stuff. You see that it seems like. Uh, there's there is still some connection that you could reach hell through this place. Your axe is gleaming very brightly. Mm -hmm. uh, and you actually hear your axe kind of saying to you, like, you, for the first time, hear your axe speak. This is a wicked place, Ricky What's Matsui. That? I'm saying this is a wicked place, Ricky Matsui. It's a wicked place. Congrat. My yeah. axe, I'm, I gotta call him axe. Okay. This is a wicked, <laughs> this right. is a wicked place. Just so you know, we, I think it means wicked like bad, not wicked like awesome. Just so you know. Do you mean... You mean wicked like bad, bad or it wicked bad. like cool? Wicked like bad. It's a bad place. Oh, okay. Um, you start to notice one. something, which well, is I'm as here. you're looking for witch magic, you see that the thing that turned you into a rat, that magic weirdly has a sense of justice or purpose to it. Mm -hmm. Like you were turned into a rat because you deserve to be. The reason you became a rat is because your soul 
already looked like this. In other words, that spell didn't... If I was a good guy, it wouldn't have worked. If you were a good guy, it wouldn't have worked. And the reason that your body turned into... In other words, Gabriella didn't turn you into a rat. Gabriella made your body take the form of its soul. And you were destined to look like this. And had you died, you would have been with these rats. Thank you, Gabby. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> um, you see, you also notice and see little sort of burning scraps of money flitting around. And as you look, you see this weird thing. Nod is already kind of ephemeral, but you see at the corner of your vision dollar signs moving around. Ephemerally, they're, even for dream, they're illusory. But you look up and see in the distance the golden door hanging in the sky over the city. And you see that literally the thing far away in the harbor that the torch of the Statue of Liberty is lifting towards, she is pointing to the golden door hanging over the city. And as you look up, you see uh, there's something there that's going to require you to like look for magic, basically. But you can get a feeling. Yeah. Can I go to the torch of the Statue of Liberty? Yeah, you guys can fly yeah, there. Yeah, let's do that. You guys fly out. You start flying there, and you see the statue turns to you. Uh, hello, hello. Are you doing this way? Looking to the Statue of Liberty? Are you here for our guided tour? I'm not here for the guided tour. I wanted to talk to you about the Golden Door. And also your torch. What's going on with your torch? I lift my lamp beside the golden door. I hold up my axe. Oh! Similar. Très bien. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. You are one of New York's bravest, yes? Uh, I'm just doing my job. To spend your life saving those who are still doomed to die. It is an act of heroism, but also of loss. You are truly a hero, Reiki Matsui. OK. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see that uh, the statue uh, turns uh, to you, Kagrash, and says, Ah, and you, I thought the little rat man. Yes. Uh, you have come here to see where I point. You can see the golden door, but there is something dark at work. Uh, you guys, from this vantage point, you see that the Statue of Liberty casts this incredible glow over the city, and you see that there is something issuing from and towards the golden door. And she illuminates almost this sickly, branching cardiovascular system that appears to be overlaid on top of dreaming. And you see, like blood moving through veins, thick green dollars moving all throughout this realm. You see that they go towards the golden door and come from the golden door as though a heart beat over the city. Is this like the wants of people? Are people dreaming about, is this like greed? Being corrupted by money, yeah. yeah. Can we? People this... are always just dreaming about the things they want, right? Yeah. You see that the statue says, the golden door, beyond it is a life worth living, prosperity, opportunity, the things that people came here to seek. And yet, that dream, however pure, it can be accomplished through these acts of power and wealth. The danger, of course, lies in losing the dream in the pursuit of your ability to obtain the dream. And Kagrash, the second she says that, you think back to your early life and what made you want to be rich in the first place. To, you know, have the power and wealth to determine your own life, freedom, your family, having them go to whatever college they wanted to go to. And at some point in the pursuit of whatever lay beyond that door, you were unfaithful to your wife, you abandoned your kids, you never went home, and you see that the golden door is shining, but this weird overlay of rooting money is in and of itself like a virus that has wedged itself in between the door and the people seeking it, and is feeding off of the dreams of this city. Dude, let's fly up and get a closer look at that. 
Okay. Ball of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> to put it poetically. <laughs> um, you guys Ballers. fly closer. Go ahead and give me an investigate check. Oh, not perception. Come on. 16. Uh, investigate. Uh, 14. You guys uh, snoop around up there. Um, uh, are you guys using any magic or spells at this point or no? I'm getting pretty low on spells. Cool. You know what? I might. I, I think I do have a level one spell left. I'm going to cast... Eating wasn't a short rest, right? Eating was a short rest. Okay. Mm. Um, I'm going to try to cast, like, cure wounds on this, like, virus money that's up in the thing. You cast cure wounds, and you see that a lot of the money shrivels and turns to dust under your hand, as it would do you think with certain healing spells working on, it's hard to say, you wish you could have gotten a better glimpse of it, but as you burn it, you get a smell of like the burning money, Ricky, Mm -hmm. and a similar smell flashes into your head that you smelled a little bit at Bethesda Fountain, and it is the smell of undeath. The cast divine sense. You see this weird, infected blood system in the realm of dream and somewhere deep within it in the tangle as it goes downtown there is some force of undeath that is tapped into this and is n- not fully responsible for it but is able to command it to some the, degree the vampires right it seems right yeah all right all right uh, and but that is all that you guys are able to glean from there. And we're going to cut over to Sophia. Um, uh, so what's how's it going? You and Alejandro are flying. <laughs> Alejandro's like as we're flying. I just want to turn to Alejandro and say, Alejandro, I got pretty fucked in that fight, and um, and we had a short rest, and you know, I I, I can I can rolled the dice, as it were, to see how much I... But you have, like, a heel on you or anything like that? Uh, nothing on me, I'm afraid. Sorry. Okay. All right, then. Um, uh, you arriving... Sophia's mind is also on Dale, right, at this point? No, no. That was a good pep talk that they gave cool. us. So I'm, like, not... I'm not... It's, like, I'm kind of, like, I use the gift card. Mm-hmm. I'm, like, I feel like I took a step in the right direction. Um... Cool. You get to the pearly uh, gates. You fly all the way off into pearly. You're actually near. You see that the pearly gates are kind of hanging over where JFK Airport is. Oh my uh, god. Um, uh, and you see that sort of through there. You see this like airplanes kind of coming in and out oh, through Dream. Okay, I like that. Uh, and you see that there's a bunch of people that kind of are like passing away in New York City that get into this little like airport and take off. To, you see way in the distance, there's like pearly gates. Uh, Wait, through- you gotta pay five bucks extra to take the air train to heaven? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Everything in this city is a grift. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you and Alejandro look out and are looking up at these pearly gates. Um, uh, go ahead and give me an investigate check. Okay. Hmm. It's gonna be seven. So you're you're kind of just sort of flummoxed by it. You're looking around. This place doesn't feel as, you know, heaven, the force of like celestial. And you see too the pearly gates, you can even sense through this like other divine realms too. Like maybe it's the pearly gates to heaven, but there's also like maybe the Roman Elysium past there, maybe Valhalla somewhere past Ooh. there as well. That there are like all these realms but of like reward and peace and lives well lived. Uh, you are kind of taken in by the peacefulness of it and just the sort of of these dreamy airplanes. Alejandro kind of smiles along with you and goes, someday I'm going to go through those gates. What do you think is on the, what do you think, where do you think your plane lands? Where does my plane land? Yeah. It lands on a runway next to beautiful buildings and happy people, kids playing out on the street with hopscotch and my wife. Wow. I have missed her for quite some time. As you say that, you suddenly hear, sir, 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 sir! (laughs) And you look and see a commotion up at the pearly gates. You see a bunch of angels absolutely getting their asses kicked. Alejandro, let's get into this! Uh, He looks up and says, I think if we go there, we might actually die. That's beyond dreaming. That's 
That is heaven through there. Okay, well, someone's in need, so we should probably you go. You see some insane, bah, 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 and in that sort of anime way, a bunch of bah, angels all fly back in a circle at the same time. Oh my God, this and is like you see, a Renaissance painting. You see Dale in a little white short sleeve button up shirt, little skinny black tie, black pants, thick, black rimmed glasses, kicking a bunch of angel ass and charging out of the pearly gates and zooming with this incredible otherworldly leap. Uh, tears streaming down his face. Dale has the most cherubic, like handsome boyish face and is just jacked as hell, incredibly muscular with a couple little like, uh, you know, like so a little like name tag for the accounting firm where he used to work. And he, whoo, bam, lands on the ground in front of you. C can he see me? He can see you. Dale, what the fuck are you doing here? Listen, I don't, I don't have a lot of time, sweetie. They're gonna drag me back there in a second. That I don't understand. I thought you were with Isabella in fear, no. He reaches out, takes your hand, and says, that text was very sweet. Sweetie, I would never. I've been there. And he points to the pearly gates. Isabella is the reason that you haven't seen me, but not for the reason you think. I haven't been in the waking world for quite some time. So you're in dream world? You see that you can hear angels coming. He looks down to you and says, sweetie, I know this is hard and we don't have time. I'm not alive anymore. Okay. I'm sorry that I left. You know it wouldn't have been my choice. I'm so sorry. He looks, the angels are coming closer. He's like, you'd have to be crazy to leave Sophie Pikes. And I got your text. I wish you the best too. You see tears stream down his face. He goes, when you get to the top, I know what it'll seem like, but there is someone there. There is someone there. The top of what? You see angels grab onto his arms and begin to pull him back. Um, and I fight the angels. <laughs> <laughs> I attack an angel. I use all my key points attacking an angel. So no. Andro says, I cannot, I am a bystander to this. I have did not attack an angel. You see, the, as you're hitting the angels, each time you wallop one of them, you see they go, I get it, fair. Don't take, I'm not taking it personally. As the, um, uh, but you see, eventually, go ahead and give me an athletics check. I got a 23. That's not gonna beat an at 20. What? Um, no, they didn't! You see, they're angels, baby. Uh, you see they restrain you, and they're, they're like bleeding from the nose, and they're like, we do not hold it against you. We know that you're coming from a place of rage, and we get it, and we're not oh gonna be Oh my God, assholes. do not speak down to me. No one, hey, no one's speaking down. But don't tell me you're just doing your job here. We can, hey, he's gotta be, he can't be coming down here. He has a job to do on Earth. Um, He's got deer in the backyard to watch. Who's gonna watch the deer? You see Dale is almost back at the pearly gates and he yells out, he says, also, what's the problem with the Visa gift card? You know what you like the best. <laughs> and and whoosh, disappears. It was very practical. He says, I've tried to always be practical. Tell Jackson I said hi. Jackson? All of what's this. What the actual fuck? My husband is fucking dead? Uh, Alejandro looks around and says, well, this is a lot to process. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, let me, sorry, let me fucking hold your hair back while you fucking <laughs> process this. My husband's fucking dead. I thought he left me and now I find out he didn't leave me, which is a cool thing, but you know what's worse than that? Him being dead. So let me hold your hand through this, Alejandro. <laughs> Yeah, yeah so, so I so what I said I do take back. I thought yeah that was the wrong yeah. thing to say. I that thought was, you might yeah. we've all said wrong things and this was your fucking turn. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um. Wait, so Isabella Infierno killed my fucking husband. As you say that, you uh, feel a like crackle of something around yourself, and a bunch of magic wraps around your fists as you say that. I'm gonna fucking kill her. <laughs> and I don't think she's going to the great big airport in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna cut from there over to, um, uh, we're gonna cut from there over to uh, uh, Glamour. Uh, over near Carnegie Hall, this incredible, like, three-story, very swanky fairy bar whoom, uh, appears, uh, and it, it is just decked out and gorgeous. This is very much one of those, like, Broadway, like where the stars come mm -hmm. to drink kind of place. I am gonna cast um, disguise self on me just because I don't want anybody snitching to Titania. But it's I'm just basically like uh, Liza Doolittle in um, at the beginning of uh, fucking Doctor Doolittle. Oh, My Fair Lady. <laughs> my Fair Lady. Thank <laughs> yes. you. I was like Pygmalion. That's not right. So I just like have very obvious like dirt splotches across my face and then a very silly little hat with flowers I can coming. See my dick. Incredible. Oh, blind. Me, this uh, <laughs> bar. Did call you something else? Are you still misty, or you got? Gonna... Just... How about Liza? <laughs> cool, blimey! Look at this bar, then. Uh, you see a little. Cool, blimey! Uh, riding, you see, like riding a little pot of gold is a tiny little leprechaun, crazy red mutton chops and a bowler hat with a shamrock. Really tending with him to glamour. Oh, bring gold everywhere. And can I be conjecturing then? Oh, uh, yeah, I'll take one of your Manhattans, please. Oh, Manhattan coming right open for you, sir. I'll just take water. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have a Manhattan, too. Oh, the days of the carry dancing, hovering of the pipers, too. Stand on the bar, Hover one of those hearts of gladness, gone alas <laughs> like our youth too soon. <laughs> Two beautiful sparkling fairy drinks appear in front of you. Are you crying? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I'm fine. And, yeah, these two drinks appear. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, two Manhattans appear. They are delicious. Um, uh, go ahead and roll an in, uh, investigation checks. What are you guys checking uh, out while you're here? Yeah. Ooh, investigation I have is very low. Uh, I have very high. What are we looking for? Uh, I don't fully understand. I mean, I guess we just came to have two delicious drinks. <laughs> I'll have another round of Manhattan. Um, cool, you guys just get fucking blasted, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you guys bully. What are we doing here? No, we're supposed to be looking for something. <laughs> what are we? We're supposed See, to be... this is the thing with fairy. You come here for one reason, and then you're like, oh, God, I can't remember. Oh, oh, oh we're, like, looking up to see about, uh, oh, we should... The door. And, and his soul. We should yeah. be seeing about... The soul. The soul and um, stuff. Is there anybody around here that I feel like, let's roll an investigation yeah. check. Oh. Have you got any tiny nuts? Uh, modify 20. Um, you see, uh, uh, a modify 20. I also got uh, a 10. That's pretty uh, helpful, right? You see that, um, uh, the leprechaun goes, What? You want some snacks then? Oh, oh, titi ti ta ti ta ta ra ta ti ti ta ti ta ri ti 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 Uh, and you see that a little ring of perfect red with white spot mushrooms grow out of the bar in a little circle. And good to eat they are, and good for you as well. Oh, thank you. Maybe you shouldn't eat these. Like, I, I don't know what the human digestive system yeah, great. would do. I'll, I, you know, I'm good. I thank you. This is my favorite. Um, you see in a long, beautiful navy pea coat, this, like, quaffed, stunning man with purple eyes and sort of elfin ears. Uh, at the end of the bar, speaks to the leprechaun, and he comes over uh, with another two small things of little, like, absinthe shots with floating Lucky Charms in them. Well, thank ye kindly, good sir. We are two but humble, normal people here. Yeah, we're both humble and normal. Uh, <laughs> you know that this guy, it, this, this person at the end of the bar, clearly is in some awareness here. And you can also tell Kingston, dreamland or not, you know when people are new to town, this guy's new to town. Mm. Uh, what's your name, sir? Oh, uh, it's nice to meet you. My name's Bobby Goodfella. Oh. New Yorker born and bred. Mm. Ask him if he's related to Robin Goodfella. The second you say that, you recognize this person's eyes. The form is different, but the eyes are the same, and you speak to the puck himself. Oh, hello, darling. It's so good to see you. Good to see you. 
I understand that I guess all of our mutual glamour's fallen away. Ah, well, you know, Lahayam. Hey, Slancha. <laughs> um, Do you know each other? Uh, you might have read about me. Puck, Robin Goodfellow, if we shadows have offended, think but this oh, and yeah. all is mended. He does a great bit where he pretends to be a stool and then whips himself away at the last minute. If that, that's ever happened to you, that was probably him. That's me. It's a great bit. It's a great bit. Every time you do it, it's funny. You see that the costume of Bobby Goodfellow <sighs> disappears, and there is a tiny little butterfly-winged goat satyr boy standing there with fuzzy ears uh, with a little wine skin hanging around his bare chest. How's that bitch peas blossom? Says, oh, she's she's just awful. She's always chattering on and Oh, God, fucking... still? Terrible. Yeah, it's true. Terrible. Listen, love, I've come to tell you, she's coming for you. How? You got my mirror, didn't you? That was your mirror? Sorry, you gotta do what the orders are. Lord Oberon demanded it. Oh, no, she's not back with Oberon, is she? I think they're just fucking... I don't think that they're, they're, they're moved in together God, it's again. It's the worst when they're together, because then they're, like, trying to one-up each other with helping, but it just fucks everybody else over, and then... Oh, it's exhausting. You're talking, about, you're talking about all the characters from the play, right? The play you're doing? These are real people? Yes, I mean, Shakespeare was a great bard and spent a lot of time in his youth and fairy. You see that Robin looks at you and just goes, um, uh, I've come to warn you, right? And looks around, puts Bobby Goodfellow back up. Darling, you gotta understand, you owe centuries of glamour. She's coming for you, and she's coming for the Don as well. He has not been paying his taxes like he should. Darling, I get my glamour from the people of New York City and all of the bridge and tunnel people that come and watch my shows. I don't owe nothing to Titania. Well, you and her are going to have to hash that out. Uh, you see, this is like the most theater bar in the world because everyone's changing their disguises and doing accents for each other. Someone's like, right, no, a Scottish accent's like this. No, this is this. Like, this is, no, it's deeper, deeper from the resonant here. Um, just a bunch of fairy actors all talking to each other. Nightmare. Uh, he <laughs> looks over at you and says, also, you got to know, sweetheart. Titania's heard something's happening in New York. The world of mortals is not long for this world. Come home. We miss you. Oh. Hey, buddy, what was that? What was that you said about the world of mortals? Hey, best of luck to you. You see, he looks and says, you want to throw in your lot with a bunch of humans? I mean, look, here's the great thing about humans. They're mutable, they're changeable. Everything in fairy is just always the same and then you're just there and you're immortal and then you're like, I guess I'll throw out these flower petals on the bed again because that's the thing that I do every day and then I'm it's like the only, that's why people are always doing tricks, you know, because it's so boring there. It's like, well, I, all I can do is go to the mortal realm and fuck with people. <laughs> uh, you see that uh, Bobby Goodfellow says, you have a call. Aren't you, but baby, come here. I have a great agent, and I am sure he would love to see you. Come and play in New York. Uh, you see, he smiles and says, when the chips are down, remember who your people are, Misty, and vanishes. I will. <laughs> I'll remember. Uh, you see that whew, he vanishes. And Casey, you look around at all these fairies looking at you like they know something that you don't. I don't like this place. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I didn't, I felt like I had no pl I, I'd like to leave. Can we go? Folks, if you want to learn an authentic New York accent, you talk to my friend Kingston Brown over here. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> a bunch of fairies. <laughs> Teach us your accent. Teach no, us your I'm accent. Good. I don't really, I don't really have, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't talk like, um, I don't, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> you split. Uh, awesome. Pete, 
you head over to this incredible museum that is in the middle of Central Park, where in real life there is no museum. It's halfway between the Museum of Natural History and the Museum, uh, the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Um, it's resting there. It's at a weird, funny little angle, and you see that there's all this magic pouring into it of all the memories of people in New York. Cool. Um, and Nod um, uh, asks, says, uh, "Come on in." Is there entry, or is it like a pay-what-you-can kind of thing? There's a suggested donation, but... Fuck yeah, let's go. Let's just uh, go walk <laughs> right in, just kind of, you know. <laughs> and you see Nod also kind of pulls out uh, their little, like, dress <laughs> pockets, and a little dream moth flies out. And you see this says, Bunch of bums, you bums! <laughs> Art should be free! <laughs> <laughs> uh, you fucking walk in and start looking at this place. You feel, as you walk in here, your wild magic surge at the Vampire Club, coupled with your uh, true strike that you cast on Robert, as you're walking through the thing of memories, you start hearing his voice in your head, but you think that it is not him talking to you. You think you might have fucked him up so much with your explosion that you're walking around in his mind right now. Okay, like the room I'm in is his mind. Yeah, well, you start to, f you can feel him in your mind as you start walking through all these exhibits. And the exhibits are of the incredible deeds of all of the previous Vox Phantasma that have been in New York City. Uh, and Nod just starts to kind of show you things. The art kind of comes to life and moves around. It's like the dopest museum you've ever been in because all of the exhibits are moving and changing and chimeric and flowing. Um, and we can actually update two things on your sheet right now. Cool. You are proficient in Arcana as of this exact moment as you begin to absorb all the memories of the previous Vox Fantasma. What does that mean? What does it go up to? Add your proficiency bonus. Oh, sick. Add your proficiency bonus. Yeah! There. Yeah! Uh, hell yeah. Um, and uh, Nod asks you as you start to absorb all this awesome, and you are fully getting, like you see this like rich woman in the 1920s throwing these giant parties and making the dream of like the Gilded Age come to life. And you see uh, Emma Lazarus in like the late, mid to late 1800s writing the new Colossus and this dream of America being this place and like people coming to New York to start a new life. And basically that each Vox Phantasma has summoned forth this time of dreams and change and chaos, and it was up to them whether that chaos would change things for better or for worse. Cool. Um, you see that, uh, as you're going through, Nod says, for your magic, I leave it up to you. Do you wish to have the wildness of your magic be restrained? Or do you wish to embrace it, and by embracing it, seek to mold it towards your vision? Ooh. You see that Nod explains, you will, if you choose to restrain it, your bursts will happen more infrequently. If you choose to embrace it, they will happen as often, but you may have some say in how they manifest. So far, they've been great. They've really like protected me and looked out for me. But what's the worst thing that could happen in a wild magic surge? You see this nod, they shrug and go, chaos is chaos. Dreams have a role to play in the waking world. And sometimes it shakes things up. Could I kill everyone I love? There's a risk of that, but whether you choose to embrace it or restrain it, you will have powers at your disposal to help you avoid that. I say embrace it. You continue to roll wild magic normally, but now you will roll with advantage on the D100 that I roll back here. Oh, Meaning cool. you'll get two possible Ooh. effects and you can choose between them. Fuck, oh, cool. Oh, that's okay. cool. That's awesome. Um, Help. Yeah! Uh, yeah, you see, you're like beginning to understand your magic. You're like learning it and teaching it. Um, I reach into my pocket uh, and pull out like a little baggie, but it has cherry tomatoes in it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pop a cherry tomato. Nice healthy snack, you're learning your shit. Ricky's got a lot of great <laughs> tips. <laughs> um, as you go through, but yeah, you do hear the Robert's voice partially, and you're like partially in his mind. Cool. Um, as you 
uh, walk through. Um, you see you enter a little hall here, because this is all the memories that everyone's ever lived in New York. You do see a hall here and see that there are names on the exhibits of Cug Rash, Misty Moore, Ricky Matsui, <laughs> Sophia Lee, Uh-oh. and Kingston Brown. I look at them. Um, you think that it's getting late. Late is the hour of the day. You could probably have time for one. I mean, Kingston, duh. <laughs> <laughs> um, you begin to walk through Kingston Brown's life. I feel bad that so I'm doing invasive. this, but I'm just like, that's the person I'm connected with for better and worse the yeah. most. You walk through um, and you hear two voices running through you. It gets really weird and trippy here as you're going into someone's active memories. You hear Nod speaking, and at the same time, you hear Robert's subconscious mind speaking as well. Like, almost as though he is unfocused and getting weird images of this, not in his conscious mind, but in his subconscious somewhere. Oh, as- wait. Um, if I'm doing this, will Robert then have some of Kingston's memories at his you disposal? Don't, you don't think so. Okay, okay, no. cool, cool. Um, you think that weirdly it's like you're, you just have a weird connection to Robert now because you surged on him cool, so cool, hard. Cool. Um, you start to go through Kingston Brown's life. Uh, you see, you know, in the like late 60s, early 70s, like a young boy running through the streets of Harlem, surrounded by family and community. Oh, look um, at you. Uh, <laughs> Lou, uh, uh, you, we, you see like passing images of things. Uh, Lou, I'm gonna throw a curveball at of you right here. Not. I'm gonna ask you to play Kingston Brown throughout the ages. You got it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you see uh, Kingston Brown as like a six-year-old uh, watching as like a young girl on this like playground outside of a public school is like crying over in a corner with a skinned knee, having been pushed down by some of the other boys uh, here on the playground. Uh, what does uh, Kingston, young, like seven, eight year old Kingston do? Excuse me? <laughs> yeah? Do you need a band aid? <laughs> they wouldn't let me play the game with them. Hey, that's fine. Kids can be mean, but we can get that patched up, and then we can play. You see the scene shifts to Kingston, uh, Kingston giving up his own recess to walk this little girl to the nurse's office and showing up there and being there with her while she gets a Band-Aid on her knee. Um, uh, We cut over to uh, Kingston in his sort of, like, teenage years, a little bit younger. Um, You see uh, that... Kingston, this is a time in your life where your grandmother, who's no longer with you in the present day, uh, is very ill. And you see that there's a meeting at school uh, where there is sort of a teacher talking um, and speaking to both of your parents, Winston and Victoria, and saying, Kingston is a very gifted athlete. We would be able to take him around the country. We would travel around. Um, He he would obviously not be able to be here in New York, but uh, this is a potential for Kingston to really shine. Um, And you see your parents kind of look at each other and look at Kingston. I I can't. Not when Grandma's sick. Uh, Maybe we can talk about it in the future, but um, I'm sorry, but I need to be here. Uh, we see a Kingston in his college years um, uh, speaking to a like a admittance counselor at a high school, saying, "With these scores, Kingston, if you're interested in medicine, you could be a doctor. You could be making hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, that's hyperbole, but you could be making a lot of money." Yeah, but the problem, I mean, is there anywhere in my neighborhood where I could stay? Because I'm not really trying to be too far away. I mean, especially because I know it's about eight years of school, and and that's just a long time to be so far. But we're talking about scholarships to Cornell. We're talking about places where you could think of yourself. Yeah, I mean, that's easy to do. Uh, But there has to be a way to make this work here. 
You see a Kingston around the age of 30. This whole time in your head, you hear Nod going, dreams and the waking world. You represent the force of an individual's dream, the need for a person to be themselves and shine their own light. Kingston represents the other side. He has always and forever made the choice to serve those around him. And you hear Robert going, fucking schmuck, look at this fucking idiot. Every advantage and opportunity thrown away, and for what? And you see, uh, Kingston is 30. There is this insane dragon on Bleecker Street, like this long, multi-legged dragon handing him this subway token and saying, you will be the Vox Populi of New York City. You had to say that again. Vox what? <laughs> you have given of yourself time and time again. And now images staggered up and up and up, just like Kingston, like, missing a party to help someone move. Kingston showing up at someone's doorstep with food. Kingston showing up at a rally for the neighborhood. Kingston showing up at City Hall to speak on behalf of people that can't speak for themselves, like, over and over and over and over and over again. And the entire city, you can hear, thanks, Kingston, thank you, thanks, Kingston, thank you, thank you. And all of those thank yous flooding into Kingston's body. Um, and you hear Robert in your head say, no. Everybody's got one time they do something selfish. Everybody's got one time they make the call to enrich themselves. That's in our nature. And you see a young Kingston Brown looking at Liz Herrera walking down the street and uh, Nod saying, to invite her into his world would be taking all of what was destined for her and forcing her into the madness of the unsleeping city. Uh, but you see this like bond of true love connecting the two of them. And you see Kingston's heart break and reach out and he and Liz twirl around in memory until many years later, you see him and Liz and Liz saying, we could have a house, we could have a car, we could have kids. I can't leave the city. I, I've explained this before, all right? You can go, but I have to be here. Where am I? You could get your doctorate and we could have a good life together. I don't, that's not a good life, not for me. My good life is here and with you, but it has to be here. You see, she looks and says, and I think our lives shouldn't be together and vanishes. And you see that, uh, images of possible futures. You're like at the edge of memory now, going back into dream, and you see Kingston with an ephemeral, changing, happy child in his arms, and that vanishes. And you, see, you hear Nod say, dreams in the waking world, often at odds. And Robert says, only a fool would give up what he wants. Look at all that that idiot sacrificed, and for what? To be alone and sad. Uh, and vanishes, and you are at the exit of the museum. Whoa, <laughs> dang. <clears throat> um, you see that Nod holds your hand and says, dreams and wishes are your domain, not Kingston's, I'm afraid. Yeah, dang. Well, cool. I feel like I understand him a lot more. You see that Nod sort of agrees and goes, I think a lot of what's different about you is probably makes sense. Kingston's given his whole life to make sure that people and places and communities thrive based on his effort and sacrifice. But those things like family and community were never there for you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have that connection at all. See, Nod looks and says, I know I'm not supposed to say this because I'm Team Dream, but there's something to be learned from both, I think. And uh, you guys uh, come back from your various quests and missions. You guys uh, appear back at the L train. Uh, Wally gets it uh, moving again. Uh, Nod waves and says, um, I'll see you guys uh, in a little while. I'll be here and again, 
I'll keep this place as safe as I can. You guys look variously like blasted from Manhattan's <laughs> and also like extremely haunted. I go yeah. straight up to Kingston, like Kingston, look, I went to this museum and I got to pick one person from the party whose life I could I go through. I wanna be And I picked you and I feel like I've seen a lot of things you no, didn't tell me and I'm sorry. No. What? <laughs> and then I like hug you. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh. As you leave Dreaming and cross Dreaming of the Waking World and Pete gives you this hug, you see that your, both of your uh, magics intertwine, intermingle, and for a second, Sophia, you look and see that yin and yang from the Monastery of the uh, Midnight Sun complete above their head, and something broken in New York is made whole. Mm -hmm. uh, you uh, continue on your way, um, you have to ride back at the Union Square subway station. I think. There's a great pizza place and I really want some pizza. Just on University Place, just right by the bookstore. We could... Uh, Does anybody want to buy a book? <laughs> uh, we saw, we so, saw... Yeah, we saw some... Uh, some kind of uh, greed, money, uh, money ball, as it were. Not the film. Uh, or the book. That. You guys you, watched Moneyball? You guys just watched, watched Moneyball? Greed is is has some part to play in uh, what's going on here. There was some kind of uh, sort of cosmic uh, greed that was uh, sickening the city, and we there was blood, cursed blood too. It's it's vampire stuff, it seems. Hmm. I think I'm gonna just drink this a thousand hour energy right now. Cool. <laughs> Should we head to that? What's Sick, it, man. Soph? Are you okay? You look. Uh, <sighs> Shocked and Doesn't angry. really affect any of your lives, but my husband is dead. What? He didn't Jeez. actually leave me. He was killed. Oh, that's good. Is well, that killed? That, I don't know. Honestly, we didn't really speak in... We didn't really speak in... Uh, it was so all sort of vague and just... Bitch who stole your husband. Do you want us to go fuck her up? Yeah, I do want to fuck her up. Wait. I don't even know, though, if she killed him or... Oh, if fuck her up. I think she killed him, but I, I can't even leap to those kind of conclusions. All I know is that he did not, mm. in fact, leave me, and he is, in do fact, I, dead. Do we still have Divine Sense Act? Yes, you do, yeah. I'm just wondering if there's anything near. <laughs> uh, well, you guys are looking around. Um, uh, you guys are also still very fucked up from the battle, so yeah. you guys might want to, yeah. like, head home and rest and recuperate okay. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, uh, the next day, you guys see uh, uh, that actually this next day is uh, the 20th of December, which is Priya's art show over in Brooklyn. Oh, great. Um, I've given the Polaroid around to everyone <laughs> as the invite, and only Kugrash refused. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not fucking taking it. That's weird. I'll just it's crawl. cool. I'll crawl, you're... A, I'll crawl through a fucking vent before I uh, do that. So you guys all have this invitation to this art show that you're that you're headed to. Uh, that day before the art show, uh, I'm sh some some people I'm sure have like stuff they got to do. Sophia. I wanted to stop by and see Mario. I think I'll probably still go through the motions of that. You find Mario on Staten Island. He's, he's not there with the whole family, um, but you stop by uh, the family house while Mario's there. Okay. He looks up and goes, hey, so finally, geez, cancel at the last minute. What's the fucking deal? You guys are going to look at some alligator shoes. I actually, I think I fixed the problem. Okay, I don't need this whole fucking dog and pony show. I'm honestly more of a cat person, so just get to the fucking point of it. What the fuck is our family doing consorting? Also, how long have you been seeing the unsleeping city and you never once thought to mention it to your sister? Look, we fucked up. You know that dad had ties to the mob for a long time. We pushed our luck a little bit and got into the confettis. There's something going on with confetti and um, there's a representative from is it Robert Moses? He looks shocked that you know that name. He goes, basically, Robert, Robert asked us to shuttle money, launder it from the confettis. And by money, I mean crazy shit, like baubles and you know chunks of magic shit and all this crazy stuff that was part of stuff that Confetti was paying to a representative from hell. This is a person who's been working with Moses for a long time. Um, make an insight check. Uh, 15. 
Uh, he's... Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, 17. He's treading carefully around a thing that has to do with Dale. You can tell. Okay. <sighs> Again, just be way more direct. I know that Dale is dead. I know that he's not with Isabel in Fierno. I don't know what the fuck happened, but I have a feeling that you do. Okay. You know how you uh, often called Isabella in Fierno a succubus? Yes. It was small of me, I know. It is, I, I hate it right. when women Sophie, go after Sophie, other women. Shut up, shut up, shut up. I know that Sophie, it was... it's not, no. You... Like, I, you... Don't need, I don't need you to preach to me Sophie, why I would she be is it. a succubus. Oh, my nod. <laughs> oh, my nod? Oh, my nod. Sophie, you were fucking right. Isabella was a succubus. We were laundering money from the confettis to her, and... Dale wasn't it? Her? She's the representative? She was sent from hell to look so at. So she's tied in with Robert Moses. Yes. And Dale started, you know, Dale was an accountant. And he started looking at the books and adding things up. And he got close. And. So who called the shot? to have my husband killed, because right now, I cannot confidently 100% say that it was not my own fucking family. Look, did we know what was gonna happen? Yeah, but he wasn't from the neighborhood. He was not right for you. He was, uh, he was, uh, you know, he was a, this, you know that he was into some kind of magic, right? He he was like a chosen one from this monastery or whatever. He was some champion who was trained to stop something or other, and, and he was fucking around, and he was nosy, and he got his nose into some bad people's business. Did we do it? No. Did we call the shot? No. All right, well, the only reason I'm not going to go after you right now is because I'm not organized enough to give you the fucking revenge you deserve. You see that he just sort of shakes there a little bit, and he's like, so if you go after Isabella, you got no idea how fucking powerful she is. Maybe you should have said that to Isabella before she went after me. You see, oh. um, you hear a purring behind you and raised hackles and extended claws. Mia, let's go hunting together, you and I. Yeah, I'm ready to sniff out. Not rats, though. Rats are my friends. Kung is a rat. We're not going after rats. We could get some rats later. <laughs> OK, no rats. Can we just do mice instead of rats? You see? OK. Uh, uh, <laughs> nuts. Um, and you take off uh, into the city. Um, the rest of you guys variously show up at uh, this like old Brooklyn brownstone loft art space. Ricky, immediately you're looking around and it's like the windows are barred with iron and there's no active sprinkler system and <laughs> like. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we gotta go in, man. Come we on. Did? Okay, but uh, if I see anything, I'll say something. Okay. Um, you guys enter the space. Uh, you know that Priya wanted to talk to you here. You walk up into this loft space and see a bunch of people gathered around this, like, kitchen table. Um, and you see that there's also, like, a roof party sort of upstairs. Um, uh, as you go, Priya goes, oh, Peter, darling, I'm so glad you're here. Come with me. Um, and she takes your hand and leads you through this art space to this table in the middle of a bunch of onlooking people and has you sit down and says, I present to all of you cruelty, an exploration oh. of a relationship. Peter, put your hands in my hands. Not only. Is this so fucked up? This is a pure ripoff of a very popular performance art piece. This is so dumb. Um, you see, everyone gasps, and Priya goes like, what the fuck is wrong with If you're gonna publicly fuck with me, at least let it be original. Oh, yeah! yeah. 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 You see, 
Picasso uh, is art. <laughs> this is bullshit. Is that free you wine? See, as I Kingston, this place is, is not up to code. Uh, <laughs> as Kingston yells that, you feel your heart. It, Kingston's approval this moment fully heals your broken heart. Uh, you can write down on your character sheet over Priya Danger. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Sophia. Her last name is Danger? I hate this bitch. Oh. <laughs> Priya Danger. Uh, Sophia, you burst through the door downstairs, um, uh, and with that, um, uh, I think uh, uh, we'll decide where some of you are in a moment. Um, who is, it, there's also like a big rooftop party where there's food and stuff. Who thinks they would be upstairs at the bigger party with the food? Who thinks they'd be on the middle story watching Pete and Priya? I mean, I'll always see a show. Middle? Pete. Uh, with middle. Pete. I'm probably on the roof. On the roof, scarf and food. Sophia, you burst through the lower level uh, it's just two levels? Uh, oh, three, three levels. levels. There's a rooftop party happening as well. Actually, right. Sophia, you have, like, you're crazy jumping. I'm going to say that you probably show up on the roof as well. Yeah, with Le Grand I think Gata. I'm just jumping roof to roof. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime that there's a rooftop party, I'm grabbing a drink along the way. Um, uh, I think I'm like at the entrance the to the second floor. Cool. Just like figuring out what's okay. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Um, uh, rad. Um, uh, you. Uh, as you say, people start, woo! Uh, Ricky, you're looking around. Um, you smell smoke. Fire! <laughs> um, Everyone! You hear up on the roof, Sophia, uh, a voice say, Oh, Sophie Bikes. I didn't think you were classy enough to go to an art show. And you see Isabella Inferno and all around her on the roof. <laughs> fire and people scream. This from a fucking woman who went to a David's bridal, bought a dress, and doesn't even have a wedding? Uh, I do have a wedding, just not to your stupid dead husband. I mean, I attack her. initiative! <laughs> 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 And that's it for this episode of The Unsleeping City. Tune in next time, where things heat up at this art show. See you then. Fire! There's a fire in the building! The downstairs is already fully engulfed. Holy fuck. You see a water tower. This is an old condemned building. There may be water in it. There may not be. You breathe in the noxious smoke. Oh my god, I'm going to go down before I kill this bitch. A bunch of artsy devils appear. These guys have already fucked us up so much, and I don't know how to stop them. Willie, is that you? Is this your dog, Dalmatian? Yeah, why? All of you fucking bitches are gonna burn. You're all gonna burn. You what? fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me?